Real quick, thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm Mary Kate Harrison with the Arkansas Alumni Association. And if you have not attended so far, this is our Lunch and Learn series. And today we are happy to have alumni Eric Jones with us. He's gonna be presenting. He graduated with his undergraduate degree in 2016 here from the university. And he is a branding expert and social media strategist. So he's gonna tell us kind of a little bit about his entrepreneurial journey from the University of Arkansas to becoming Dr. Dapper. Um, he also he lives out in California now and is the owner and CEO of a luxury line um, like Father Like Son Shoes and is also a personal stylist. He started both of the ventures, the Dr. Dapper and the shoe business while he was still in school here at the university. Um, he also recently launched the Outlet LA and the Dr. Dapper Business Growth Academy. The Outlet LA is a platform that he utilizes to host private upscale networking and social events in the Los Angeles area. And Dr. Dep Dr. Dapper Business Growth Academy is a platform where he hosts a series of live seminars on a monthly basis mm -hmm. that help you increase your income as a fashion brand, creative, or new business owner. So today, uh, Eric's going to take it away for us and... Um, well, I'll just hand it off to him. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for the introduction. Whoever wrote that, um, whoever wrote that on the website, <laughs> I was like, yo, this, this is like perfect. Who wrote that? Um, I took it from your website, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you like, you took it and you made it like a lot of, you brought everything together really well. So I was like, did, she, did I write this or did? I did. Yeah, I was right this. <laughs> so, but yeah, <clears throat> like I said, thanks for having me. Uh, this is really dope. I've always wanted to like come back and speak to uh, my alma mater because I really love, I wouldn't be who I am today without Arkansas. So that's my roots and everything. So I'll be back. He's like, thumbs up. I'll be back uh, to visit soon uh, when everything is over with COVID and things like that. But this is a perfect thing to uh, get into that. But the title of my uh, presentation is build a family, not a customer base. And I like to tell people that when I'm coaching because a lot of people tend to look at um, clients where they want to look at people like dollar signs. And whenever you can allow people to not feel like a dollar sign or like a customer, and they can feel accepted, welcomed, appreciated, and like family, you know, that, that is something that allows them to eventually, you know, it's kind of like a give, give, then take thing. And if they feel like they have to support you or they, they just have, they have to because they love you, they, they, care about, they care about you, they know your story and things like that. So I always coach people on uh, building a family, not a customer base. And she said a lot of different things about what I do. So that's what I do, branding expert, entrepreneur, mentor, influencer, different things like that. Uh, Dr. Dapper, I'll probably tell y'all how that came about as well, uh, but that's my, my kind of like stage name or social media name, and uh, yeah, we can get right into it. All right. So about Dr. Dapper, I'm from Helena, Arkansas, so anybody from Arkansas knows that Helena is a uh, southeast, you know, poor, underrepresented area, uh, so I grew up there, uh, helped my mom take care of my grandma. I really didn't have a normal childhood because I had to mature really early uh, due to my grandma becoming bedridden and things like that. Um, and then upon graduation from high school, you know, I didn't know where I was going to go to college because I knew I was going to go, but I didn't, I didn't know where I was going to go and what I was going to go for, uh, because my parents really didn't go to like college. So, uh, me and my mom, we actually, funny story, we were applying for schools in Arkansas and we applied for, uh, a state in Jonesboro on accident thinking it was the university of Arkansas. So that was, <laughs> she was like, all right, I'll cover this one and you cover the other one, uh, because we did it on an accident. So that was a funny thing with a uh, segue into college. Uh, and when I got here, uh, some of my advisors, like uh, Leslie Yingling, I'm not sure if anybody out here knows her. That's like, she's like a mom to me. Uh, and a few people in the multicultural center, they were like, oh, you dress nice. Uh, because I got tired of majoring in business and I couldn't major in architecture. Uh, so they were like, you dress nice, wanted to try out this fashion major. And I was like, all right. I didn't know that was a major, but I tried out, see how it goes. So that went good. And I just stuck with that. Um, and before graduation, you know, I grew up, since the way I grew up, I knew there was more to life. I saw my mom working two or three jobs, barely making ends meet, you know, the struggle with the rats and roaches and things like that. So I was like, I, there's something more to life than this struggle that I'm going through. Um, so entrepreneurship was that, you know, next thing that allows there to not be a cap on your success and to really create generational wealth because I became big on generational wealth uh, around my, my junior year college. And, and that's when LFLS shoes came about. And I got some shoes, some shoes here so I can show you all the shoes. <laughs> Very nice. So that was that was created in Arkansas, and people feel like what? Like you do like luxury stuff, and you, you built it in Arkansas. I'm like, yeah. So it was really it was really cool to kind of step into that from reading an article, and uh, just the whole storyline how it worked out. Me going to church and growing up in church, and my style being dapper, 
and then advisors telling me fashion and then me reading an article in like class in my fashion classes uh, and really sparking that that interest in like the shoe industry so um lfls shoes became about and then dr dapper uh came about because people would ask me to like kind of help them fix their wardrobe because they wanted to dress like me and you know it was a dapper style and anytime you go somewhere to get something fixed you're like oh you go to the doctor so i, I kind of like put those two together and just dr dapper and that became pretty cool and now through all that you know I'm, i've been able to move to la and do a lot of different cool stuff meet a lot of cool people and be involved with some cool things and it's only the beginning because i'm 24 so um, yeah, I was blessed to be able to go full time into um, into entrepreneurship, and I'll talk more about that uh, after college because I feel like that should be uh, more of an option or something that people can see that they can do. You know, not going to nine to five and you know being forced into that, but actually seeing a path for entrepreneurship to uh, you know live in their purpose and uh, whatever they're passionate about. Awesome. You want me to change slides? Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so this is LFLS shoes. Um, just to give y'all like an image or like a picture of what the shoes uh, look like, social media and the website's there. Uh, we don't have to stay here too long, but that's the shoe company wanted to show that. And then we can go to the next. And so with Dr. Dapper, you know, this is like, this has been how I've been able to pivot as well. So I've talked about the pivot a lot. A lot of people don't understand how to pivot uh, within something. And this, me building a personal brand allowed me to be able to pivot and, and fall back on myself and not be like, okay, what am I going to do now? I don't have a job. I don't have income. You know, this business isn't flowing. You know, what can I do now? You know, I didn't, I, I was able to, you know, think outside of the box. So I wouldn't be confined in the box that society tries to put us in. Uh, and through building a personal brand and building an image of myself, which I'll talk about later, uh, I was able to pivot into, uh, you know, introducing digital guides, which I'll talk about um, a little bit after. It's like a few slides down. And those digital guides, I've been coaching people a lot on, you know, you have information in your head and you can monetize the information. All you have to do is package it, present it, and promote it. And a lot of people don't know how to do that because they feel like what they know in their head or what they gain from their nine to five isn't of value to people. But in actuality, there are thousands of people that don't know what you know, even if it's the smallest thing. And if you feel like you need to know 20 things within that industry and you only know five things, you can start with those five things. And as you're teaching people that don't know those five things, you can be learning those next five, those next 10 things that you feel like you need to know to teach people. So uh, Dr. Dapper is something that's been beautiful. And through that, you know, public speaking, uh, panels, panel talks, uh, the outlet LA, you got uh, the tea line I'm about to drop. That's why I asked y'all if y'all had y'all tea this morning because tea is very important. It's a, it's a lifestyle. So take a sip on that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Dr. Dapper is really just following passion. You know, it's, it's all about what I love, what I care about, because people fail to realize when you're building a personal brand, you don't have to step out of character to like actually monetize that. People come to you because they feel like they're accepted. They see themselves in you. They walk into your social media like area and they look around like, oh shit, I feel like I'm at home. You know, he likes the same things I like. He, he, he has the same opinion that I have. You know, he has great energy. I like his style. I like where he lives, this and that. So it's a lot of different things within personal branding. Uh, it's like knowing yourself, knowing your style, knowing your area of expertise and, uh, and things like that, because it all goes back to self. Self is source. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as well. But uh, that's Dr. Dapper. Awesome. We can get the next one. Yeah. So this is my story. And uh, I like to kind of show my story in like a meme form, because it's kind of like when I was starting out, there wasn't enough, enough capital to kind of or enough resources to connect with people and get my story like out there. So I would create my own headline news and make myself, you know, seem as more important than I, than I actually was. So I did that through the meme that you see on the right side of the screen with me uh, sharing my story, like the people I lost and things like that. So um, my father, my grandma passed in 2010, my dad passed in 2013 and my mom passed in 2016, right before I graduated. So she helped me start my shoe company and she never got to see me sell a pair of shoes. Um, and she didn't get to see me graduate. So, that really, you know, lit a fire under me in a way because, you know, everybody's different. Some people take pain <clears throat> and, and, and downfall and they look at it as like, oh, this is negative. They, they might stop, you know, pursuing that degree or they may not see um, a reason to keep pushing. But a lot of people, we know that death is real, but we fail to realize that life is very much real so, uh, as well. So, you know, just because your parents passed, you know, you're still alive. So that means you still have a purpose in your life. And she helped me start that shoe company. So I, I saw generational wealth in that. And with that degree, I can't pass that degree down, but I know I can build something from the shoe company that I can pass down. And then also 
I had to realize that, you know, in order for life to be given, life has to be taken. So it's a give and take thing in life. And, you know, I really felt like she dedicated her life to, um, to just me. When, I, when, when she was conceived with me, she knew that she was giving birth to a king, a person that was going to change the world, a visionary. So she really sacrificed so much. So I felt like I was, I would be, it would be stupid for me to not take everything that she helped me build and uh, continue to create that generation of wealth and to continue to build that, that, that lineage that she started. So my story is really deep and it inspires a lot of people. And even just that being the surface, because there's a picture that shows the surface of an iceberg, what people see. And then it's like the under what people don't see all the things you go through as an entrepreneur or as an individual in life as well, because we all have a story. So you just have to understand how to package it, present it and promote it. Going back to that, uh, you know, how can I share my story to touch people's heart? Because once you touch people's heart, you're that much closer to getting their money or their pockets, which is like, you know, every good brand has a good story. So um, that's, that's kind of like the adversity part of my journey. Uh, the the kind of like I top tip of the iceberg kind of thing. Uh, and I talk a little bit about my childhood, how I grew up in uh, college life. I talked a little bit about that, you know, how I transitioned into fashion and things like that. And uh, some of the, some of the people I met in college, you know, at college is different for everybody. Some people use it to actually find themselves and some people use it because they have to, you know, go to, because they're going to be a doctor or a nurse or a lawyer or an accountant, you know, you need to go to college for that. But some people just go just to figure out who they are, what they love, and then they get in a, in a, in a major that they love and they're really like, okay, I meet people that are interested in the same kind of things I'm interested in, which is fashion for me, because I'm in fashion, but I'm not in fashion. But because I was in fashion, I made the right connections to actually, actually build a shoe company uh, that would allow me to branch off because you plant one seed and, and then people think they have to do so many things in the beginning, but it's like, no, you plant that one seed and what did that seed do? It grows, it sprouts, and it branches off into different things. So that's what happens whenever you, um, you know, you just, you plant one seed and it grows and you nurture it, you water it, and you really focus on that niche, that one specific thing, just like Louis Vuitton, they focused on totes, like Nike, they started with, he started with the, uh, with the track shoe. So any successful brand or, or business or individual in, in general, you know, I always ask people, well, what do you want to be known for? You know, because people always, oh, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. But when you think about specific people, when you think about Dr. Dapper, you think about shoes. When you think about Will Smith, you think about acting. When you think about Steve Harvey, you think about comedy and uh, Family Feud. And you can go and you, when you, you can go on and on and on and on about the people that started specific things. And then now they're doing so many different things. But you have to become known and become trusted and, and become an expert in a specific industry. And then after that, people trust whatever the hell you put out. <laughs> and it really doesn't matter. So I push that a lot for people. Um, and I talked a little about full, I didn't talk that much about full-time entrepreneurship. But as soon as I graduated in 2016, I stepped full time into my business. Um, and that was, that it was a risk, but after I lost my mom, I put that at the top of the list of the worst things that can happen to me. So uh, from that and building and going through different things, now through my digital guides, through coaching, through speaking, I'm able to show people that, you know, I'm very transparent and very um, authentic and genuine about how I speak and what I share to people because uh, there, are, there's, there, are, there are entrepreneurs and they're entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs will get, discouraged the people that can actually you know get through it they'll get discouraged because people don't show the raw parts of of like entrepreneurship uh to the media they only show the like social media is a highlight reel for a lot of people but for me i try to make sure that i show the ugly the pretty and the ugly because you have a entrepreneur that's like dang that looks good that looks easy they just made it in like a year and then you got this entrepreneur that looks like dang they blew up so fast and i'm going through this 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 and this i must not be doing something right so you have two different people and you need to weed out the entrepreneurs and inspire the entrepreneurs. So that's what I really, I really love inspiring entrepreneurs and weeding out entrepreneurs by sharing my story and talking about how I went full-time into entrepreneurship after I graduated with no job, no money, uh, my first order of shoes being defected and, and really just going through trial and error because we, know, we fail to realize we need that journey. Uh, we need to fall. Failure is a prerequisite to success. And if you don't understand how to fail and how to like get up, you know, you, it's, it's like you, you aren't, you aren't, you don't have that grit and that resilience that you need to actually, when you make a million, it's like, okay, you can't get a million tomorrow because if you got it tomorrow, you wouldn't know what to do with it. You, you would lose it, you know? So the process is so needed. And one of my homies was like, if I hadn't have fallen and scraped my knee, I wouldn't know how well I could heal. And that's a deep, it's very deep. <clears throat> and, then, and then within the moments when you're going through those struggles, people fail to realize you have everything you need in that moment to make it through because if you didn't have everything in the previous moments that you had in your life, you wouldn't even have that specific moment in, in time. 
So that's a really big thing just to remember as well. Um, and so how, how, and why, how, why, how and why shoes and branding? So shoes um, came about, I've always liked shoes. I grew up in church. I was, grew up dapper. You see the picture there with the hat on, you see the suit. You know, it's like, that's just a lifestyle for me. So I feel like everything that I do right now uh, has been built off of lifestyle. And I have a, a, a meme that'll come up in a little bit that'll really explain uh, branding and marketing and how like, how like it'll make it'll break it down so simple to you be like dang that's that's really cool so you know lifestyle is really big and everything I do and you know I only wore dress shoes and casual shoes so that was like the only thing that I was going to do because I feel like if you step into a business you have to know how to you have to live that lifestyle because if you look at a founder of a business and they don't wear the things that they sell I can't really people don't people are less likely to trust you trust that business because you don't live the lifestyle that your brand represents. Like if you have a Christian brand and you out getting drunk and you just twerking and doing all this, people are less likely to trust that brand because it's like, you're not being the Christian that you, 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 you like, you know, selling to. So that's always a big thing on uh, how and why shoes, because that's just my lifestyle. That's what I do. And I'm really passionate about it. And when you live something and it becomes bigger than you, you never really give up on it because the only time people fail is when they give up. So I've been known to like, do more with less and not fail and not give up. So I, I, I preach that all the time. Like, you know, really live off purpose, passion, and what you what your lifestyle is, understanding that. We can go to the next. <clears throat> okay. And then we here we have a question. Or however many people in here. How many people in here? Uh, we got about 40 of us. About, about 40? What's up, yep. 40 people? <laughs> so this question is for y'all. Do we have, like, a chat box? We don't have a chat we box. We do. Yep. Do, we do. Where the chat box at? Where the chat box at? I want to hear. Here we go with the chat box. So I'm looking at the chat box right now. I want y'all to answer this question for me. Have you experienced anything detrimental in your life that has shifted or completely changed your view of life? And then how did you navigate through that situation? I'm looking at the chat box. And then I always want people to remember, like, sometimes we tend to look at other people that are further along than us, and we kind of compare ourselves to them. And that can cause us to really, like, get down on ourselves or beat ourselves up a lot. But we always have to remember that if a business has been in, <clears throat> in business for 20 years, you can't compare your chapter one to their chapter 10 or their chapter 20. And that's something that's very, very, very important for us to remember as entrepreneurs or, or just individuals in general. Like if you're trying to get a promotion at work and you see somebody getting promoted, 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 you know, don't look like, oh, why am I not getting promoted? It's like, how, what can I do better? What should I shift? What should I change with myself? I'm, am I prepared? to take on that load that that person's about to take on. So we have to really go back to self and look at, at what we've been through. Have we been through enough? You know, have I been vetted enough to be in that position? So that's a really big thing for me as, as well. Uh, I didn't mean to make a chat box that big. <laughs> yeah, I was honest with my friends, I let them support me through a tough time. You have to be honest. Honesty is something that <clears throat> ego, ego can, and can have you crying over a closed door that won't open that had nothing behind it. Like we have to get, like sometimes we have to only move ourselves out of the way because we're, we're the people that are in the way of ourselves, you know? So everything kind of tends to go back to self. And that's why I always say self is source. You can, you can go to the next slide. Huh? All right. Move this back down here. The strategy. So this is the one, this is the thing I was talking about with marketing. Marketing versus branding. Uh, marketing is like asking someone out on the date. Branding is the reason they say yes. <laughs> Read that again. Read, read it. Everybody in here, 40 people, however many people, read that again. Marketing versus branding. Marketing is like asking someone on a date. You're out saying, hey, I want to go on a date with you. I want to go on a date with you. I want to go on a date with you. You're on Tinder. You're swiping right, swiping, swipe, swipe, swipe. But what do they do? They won't swipe right on you if you aren't branded in the way that they like it. If you don't have, if you're not tailored, if you're not looking fresh, fresh cut, quarantine, cute, <laughs> you know, you ain't, if you ain't got shit together, they're going to be like, uh, Nah, I'm not going to go out on a date. So same thing for business. You can market, run ads, promote, speak all you want to. But if you're, if you aren't packaged, presented and promoted in the correct way, if you're not branded in the right way, they're never going to say yes. I don't care if you get in front of a million people, nobody's going to say yes. So it always go. everything goes back to branding. Like you, people can have marketing geniuses, but you got to have a person like me that knows how to brand it because I, I know what people want to see, how they want to see it and when they want to see it. And the first bullet here is I live by three F's and three P's. So my three F's <clears throat> are, um, they're, they're for life, like my, just my life in general. So I, I recommend anybody living by the three F's and three P's. The three F's are faith, finesse, and friendship. 
So faith is like, okay, I have to have faith within myself on what I'm doing because if I don't have faith in it, who else is, is going to believe in it? So I, it's just like, I always tell people, if you can think of something or see something in your head, or you have a dream, that's something, that's a glimpse into your future. That's something that you can obtain in life. You know, that's just a really like a glimpse into your future. So you have to uh, think it, speak it, and write it. So you have to have faith within that. You have to take action on that because faith without works is dead. So if you don't take action on that, what you have faith in, nobody will ever see it. And if you keep it in your head, nobody will ever know. Like if you, nobody will even know that you're that smart or you know that those gems like that, or you can do this or do that. So faith is really big. Finesse, <clears throat> finesse is just a way of life. Finesse is something that you, <laughs> you're not born with finesse. It's just like the gift of gab. You know how to talk your way into certain things and talk your way out of certain things. So just like if you go to a club and you're trying to get in, you kind of finesse your way in if you know the bouncer at the club, even if you're underage or something like that. So I look at success just like a club. It's easier. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know and who knows you. That's why it, under that next bullet, the importance of networking. Networking is key. And finesse and networking kind of can go hand in hand because you can, you can networking can get you into rooms that degrees will never get you into. And networking will also have people speaking about you in rooms that you've never stepped foot in. So networking and finessing your way through a system is very, very key. Just like the buddy system in corporate America. You know, if you, if you become cool with somebody that, that's above you or that makes the, makes the decisions, you're more likely to finesse your way into that, that uh, promotion before the person that's next to you uh, finesses their way into it because they don't know how to finesse, they don't know how to network. And then friendship kind of goes along with that too. Friendship is everything. Like the people you gain on your journey make the journey all worth it. Um, and, and I feel like friendship is something that like your circle is so, it, it has to be so powerful because you're only as strong as the weakest in your circle. And people have to remember that, you know, whatever you feed your ears and feed your eyes, you know, that's very important as well because it can shift the way you think and the way you move and operate within business. Like if you want to get into entrepreneurship, have some entrepreneurs in your circle, some people that have the same kind of drive, same kind of energy, same kind of goals, because you have to, what are your conversations like with your friends? If y'all are talking about right now in this moment, oh, we just playing a game, we just chilling, <clears throat> you know, ain't nothing to do, like I don't know what to do. Or are you with some people that's like, oh, we can pivot, we can do this, we can do that. You know, we can start this business or people are lacking here, so let's take up on this. So friendship is something that I really, really value so much. And that is the reason why I am where I am today is because of the people that I know and the friendships that I've made. And that is it, that's facts. And uh, so the, that's, those are the three F's, definitely live by those. And the three P's, are for business. So I, I say passion, purpose, and product. So what are you passionate about? Turn your passion into a paycheck, make it profitable. Because you can have, people have seven passions. And I'm like, yo, I just see seven streams of income. <laughs> like, because if you're passionate about it, that's something that you don't have to expect to get paid for. So once you start getting paid, you can do it for years and years and years and years, because that's what you have to do with business anyways, five to 10 years. And if you're passionate about it, you're like, oh, yeah, it's nothing. I'm going to just do it. I'm going to hustle it out. And I mean, you can have a nine to five on the side and you can still have your side hustle, you know, but you, if you're passionate about something, there, it's so easy to just monetize that because it could be something that you do every day. Like me with the tea. I drink tea every morning and every night. And I was like, why don't I sell tea? <laughs> like, it's only right for me to put my brand on it and profit from it because I drink it every day. People ask me about it. People call me and say, or DM me and say, yo, I started drinking tea because I see you drinking tea on live all the time. So if I have this kind of influence, why well, not slap Dr. Dapper on it, brand it, package, present it, promote it, and sell it. Like, it's over with. Because <laughs> people want the tea because I drink the tea. So uh, passion is big. Purpose. What's your why? Don't just make a t-shirt. Like, hey, here's my t-shirt buy it. Like, no, no. Why, do, why should I buy your t-shirt? You know, what's the purpose? What's the why? What's your story behind it? And I feel like every successful business, every successful purpose person has a purpose behind them, something that they can stand on, something that the people, their supporters can stand on and stand behind and support whenever, whenever they're out or in their circle, in their groups or wherever they, wherever they might be. You know, so what is your purpose? Ask yourself, you know, what's my why? Why did I do this? Because a lot of people have to rebrand because they shifted away from their purpose. And, they, and they, they, didn't, they didn't clearly understand what it was. And of course, your purpose can shift and change sometimes. But most of the times, it's going to go back to that root. What, why did I really start this? You know, and then, and then of, over time, it just scales. It kind of scales and grows and grows. And, and it becomes something that's big, like I said, bigger than you. And the per once the purpose becomes bigger than you, then you have something that can be generational, that can be carried on and lived out through, through your kids or whoever might come after you. And then after you have the passion, the purpose, you create a product, whether that's digital, physical service 
whatever you want it to be. I feel like digital is kind of like the way to go right now because everybody's at home, everybody's on social media. So my digital guides came out and I was like, well, I thought about, I was like, y'all got this information in my head. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And one of my homies, he was like, you should make digital guides. I was like, you right. I should do that. <laughs> I should do that because I make one, I make it one time and I never touch it again. So that one thing that I spent 12 hours on could sell for years. And I could get in front of a thousand people and speak and say, hey, this is $14. People are like, oh, $14, all this knowledge. He just gave me all these gems. I want it. So that's $14 times 1,000 people from a year ago when I spent 12 hours to make one digital guy in a quarantine because that, that forced me to pivot. So digital is like the way to go, whether that's video, videos for YouTube. If you wanted to start a vlog, if you want to start a blog, if you want to write a book, do that. Do it right now. This is the perfect time to do it. Everybody's on their phone. LA just got pushed back three more months and safer at home. So guess what I'm doing? Create more digital guides, create more videos, pushing content, speaking, webinars, because this is the perfect time to, to tap into that, that digital product, that digital world. Because when we come out of this, it's not going to be the same world. It's going to be a completely different world. When is the last time you touch money? When is, I, I barely even touch my debit card anymore because of Apple Pay. So you, you have to understand and notice, okay, where's the world going? Where's the currency? Where's the economy going? Where, where is business going? Twitter just told all their employees, you can stay at home forever now. You don't have to come into work. So it's like you're cutting costs on having this space where everybody comes into work. People get to stay at home, be happy, do different things, create their own brands. It's just the world is really shifting. It's really changing. And if you don't pivot and adjust and, and, and adapt, you're going to get left behind. And this is the perfect time to really understand, okay, what can I do? What value can I add? And how can I package it, present it, and promote it to the media? And then that leads into your area of expertise. What's your area of expertise? Everybody should know their area of expertise because how much time we got? We still good? Everybody should know their area of expertise um, because, and becoming an expert takes time. You know, it takes years and years and years and years. So, but that, the area of expertise allows you to speak on something very, with confidence, you know, with you, you're like, oh, I can speak on this. I, I know what this is. And once you become an expert in, in a certain industry and you grow an audience around that specific thing, it's easier to grow an audience. And then also it's easier to gain trust because you've, be, you've become known. Like even, what's a good example? Rihanna, for example, she, she started music. Everybody trusts her. Everybody wants an album, but she dropped Fenty. She didn't, she didn't start off in Fenty. She didn't start off with panties and bras. But because she has this trust, this loyalty, and she's built this community in her, in her area of expertise, and she's built this image, she can slap it on whatever she wants to. Louis Vuitton can slap LV on a mug, and you'll pay $200 for it. So, <laughs> but it started from a, an area of expertise. It started with a focus and a niche. So that niche has to be something that's understood in the beginning, and you have to focus on it. You have to learn within it and understand your learning language. Learning language is just as important as love language, because if you don't know how you learn, you won't be able to retain that information. So if, if you listen to society so much, this amount of successful entrepreneurs reads this amount of books in a year, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, dang, I'm trying to read, but I just don't, I don't like it. But dang, society's telling me if I don't read, I won't be successful. BS, throw it out the window. How do you learn? <laughs> do you like visual? Do you like listening? Do you like public speaking? Do you like hands-on? Do you like experience? Understand yourself. It goes back to self. What do you like? How do you like to learn? Because if you let society dictate that, that'll just hold you back from reaching that amount, that, that, like, that level of success that, that's just destined for your life. So definitely understand your area of expertise and understanding how you learn best within that area of expertise. And then how do you present that knowledge best for you? Because some people are more like, oh, I like videos. I can do that. Some people are like, oh, I can type a digital guide better because I'm more in the behind the scenes. So understanding yourself and area of expertise and your learning language is very important. Um, developing a personal brand is something that I, that I highly recommend, whether you're nine to five, whether you're a business owner, whether you just blow Joe on the corner, just trying to chill. Like personal branding is something that is so big because you have to brand yourself before you brand a business because you have to know who you are because that business is going to be so closely connected to you, what you love, what you care about, that if you don't know yourself, you don't know that business. So somebody asked me, do I, do I think that anybody can develop a personal brand? And I was like, yeah, because everybody has a story. Everybody knows something. Like you, everybody knows something. Like you work for a company that's paying you $80,000 a year to handle some of their business. Like they're not just paying you that much for no reason. And they're not paying you as much as you're worth. 
So understand your worth, add tax, add shipping and handling on top of that. So you have to understand your value because if you don't understand your value, people will pay you pennies for the rest of your life. Uh, but develop, by developing a personal brand, you set that value. You know, like, okay, I'm worth this much. You got to pay me 10000 to come speak because I know what I'm worth. I know the impact that I have. I know the gems that I'll drop. I'm going to change people's lives. So this is how much I cost to come speak. And you develop that personal brand by knowing your – y'all will see, like, the stuff on the next slide through my digital guides. I have, like, different chapters within the personal brand development guide. Uh, it says knowing, knowing yourself, knowing your style, knowing your lifestyle, knowing your area of expertise. Uh, and then it talks about personal branding as well. Um, so, yeah, personal branding is key. Highly recommend that. Uh, and if you need help with that, I'm always here for you. You know, I'm here for my alumni. We're, we're all we got. <laughs> and then uh, entrepreneurship versus nine to five. Um, within entre I'll just say something real quick on this. Within entrepreneurship, you know, there is, you wake up like, okay, got to go make some money. It's not guaranteed. And nine to five, you're like, oh, I got my check coming in two weeks. I'll be straight. I'll be good. I'll go into work, give, give 50%. I'll be all right. But entrepreneurship, you have to give 100% no matter what. Even if you didn't sell for two weeks, you have to wake up the next day and give 100%. And that is one of the most toughest things that entrepreneurs can do because you, when you go to work, you're guaranteed that amount of money per hour or that salary or whatever you might have. But in entrepreneurship, the beauty of it, you, you don't have a, a set salary. There's no cap. But also it's like, dang, I don't know when I'm going to make that. So rent might come around like, dang, I ain't got it in the bank. <laughs> so it's like, it's a, it's, it's a hustle for sure. And it's a different kind of person that, that can be an entrepreneur because you go through so many different things as an entrepreneur that if you can't deal with that, or if you can't, if you came up spoon fed on a go on a, like a golden spoon or somewhere, a golden platter, it's like, I, I'm really hesitant to work with you even because you haven't been through anything. Like, I don't know how you'll react whenever we hit, when shit hit the, hits the fan. Okay. Will you, will you crack? Will you leave? Or will you stick? Will you stay right here and will you hustle through with this, uh, with me through this? You know, so entrepreneurship is something that it's it's like it, when it comes to business partnership, it's like a marriage. You know, you wouldn't just jump in a marriage with anybody, huh? No, <laughs> you you gonna be like, okay, you have to meet these, or you have to you have to come in, you have to add value. What what value are you bringing? Because you have to pick up where I'm lacking. So in a marriage and relationship, you know, you expect that person. Okay, I got you, baby. I got you, baby. You know, we'll be good. This and that. So entrepreneurship. Your circle plays that part, or either your, your, your business partners play that part. Um, so I love entrepreneurship. I, 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 I haven't worked a nine to five since, since summer of 2016. Like, <laughs> like I, I, it's been, I've been full-time since. I haven't worked for anybody. But uh, we can go to the next one. Great. Tea time. <laughs> These are my guides. Social marketing 101, network building tactics, branding and business growth strategies 101, personal brand development. Uh, and I developed all of these within, within like, like four weeks and I dropped them at different times. Um, and each one of them has social marketing one-on-one -on -one is like the most recent and it has a lot of uh, fortune 500 gems on how they market and brand and just grow on social media. Uh, branding and business growth strategy talks a lot about how I grew organically. Um, and then just how I branded myself. And it goes back to the build a family, not a customer base, uh, developing personal, uh, a personal brand, uh, personal brand development. That came about just because people were asking me, okay, how did you build a personal brand? How can I build a personal brand? Or why is it so important? So it, it talks about, like you can go to the next one and it'll show like the different um, chapters. Yeah. Within them. Uh, so these are the different chapters <clears throat> within all of them. And you can give those a, a scheme over. Um, and these are available on my website. Um, and they start at $14. And then the, the orange one is the one that's 29 because that's really in depth. I collaborated with um, a, 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 mark, a marketing company uh, actually to, to actually bring that one together. And I did the other three on my own. Uh, so they're really, really in depth, really dope. And people like them because I keep everything straightforward to the point. Like I, you can teach this to a six, a six year old. And I highly recommend anybody, anybody that has kids at home right now, please take advantage of this because you can really shift the way they think within a system because we're in a system. The system teaches us go to school, go to college, get a job, promote it, promote it, promote it, marry, die. <laughs> that's it don't pass nothing down pass debt down don't pass anything that's of value down don't don't pass assets down pass liabilities down so these are really like i want to eventually turn these into textbooks because even colleges are getting to the point where they're teaching branding and social media strategies more in college because it's so big right now like jobs that we didn't think would exist in, tw in 2005 existed like you can pay somebody to pay somebody gets paid just to do this like, look, look at Wendy's 
Twitter. Like whoever's getting paid to run Wendy's Twitter is making bank because they really, people are engaging so much. And just the fact that social media and branding and the way you present yourself on social media and how people engage with your social media is so powerful that I have to package these and put them into a textbook and present them to a college because it's, it's necessity. Like I wouldn't be where I am today without social media, period. Like you can start with no money negatives, boo boo. <laughs> and you can build something to the point where it's like, oh, okay, this is valuable just through social media branding and, 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 uh, and just strategy. We can go to the next one. What's your story? Story sell. Story sell. You know, product, product sell too, but stories, product is like the vehicle. The story is the engine that pushes that vehicle forward. And that you can, people can, people can relate to stories more than they can relate to a product. So having a story, something that your, your target audience can relate to. And, and then people can always relate with death. Like me and my deaths, me turning that into something that, you know, actually is fuel. People can relate to that and they feel for that. They're like, dang, you went through that. You grew up with this or you lost this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dang, bro, you really inspired me. I want to support you. I want to be there. I want to be a part of this journey. So having that story, and everybody has one, but people just don't know how to package it and share it to the media. You have to understand how to share your story because that your story is so, so, so valuable. And it, 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 not, only, it, it not only can change your life, but it can change thousands of lives. So when you're, when you're not just selling the product and taking somebody's money, but you're actually changing their life with that product or with that business, and you make even bigger impact on their life. So I'm all about impact, giving back, inspiring, uplifting, motivating. Because through sharing that story, when you change somebody's life, they'll never forget you. That product can go wherever it goes. It can shrink. It can wear out. It can do anything. It can be burnt. But that story, that information, that shit that you instilled in their life that changed their life, changed their perspective on life, that's going to be with them to the grave. So you will be with them to the grave. So how can I impact thousands or millions of people not buy a product with it on their shirt, that too, but by being within them when they live. And because you're within them, you will be within their kids and their kids and their kids. So just like when Kobe Bryant died, energy is never, it never dies, it's only transferred. But when he died, that shook the world. I want, I want my death to shake the world up because I'm being you know, a vessel to the community. I'm sharing my story. I'm doing more than selling the product. I'm selling the lifestyle. I'm changing lives. I'm, I'm giving value. I'm giving information. You know, I'm giving access to different things that have changed my life that have changed your life. So through the story, you can change. You can, it's, it's crazy how powerful the story. You can just have a story and not a product and you can make millions. People get paid so much to go speak just to share their story and their perspective on life. You don't even have to, you are the product. We are walking billboards. We are walking billboards. So personal branding is so much, so, so important because you're a walking billboard, you know, and that, and that, that, that alone is like, you're your biggest asset. People, are, people have been like, oh, what should I invest in? What should I invest in? Quarantine, COVID, blah, blah. Like, yo, invest in yourself. When you look in the mirror, you look at your biggest asset. That's the biggest and the most valuable investment you'll ever make in your life. I don't care if you invest in the stock market or whatever. The stock market can go up, down. Business can go left, right. But you as an individual, nobody can take that knowledge out of your head. Nobody can take that. That's the most powerful thing that you can have. And when you apply that, it's dangerous. That's application of knowledge is where power is because you can know everything you want to know, but you, if you don't do anything with it, it's, it's powerless. But it's like, if you have the knowledge and you apply it in something that you're passionate about or just changing lives in general, having a true purpose, that's when change comes. And then we go back to package, present and promote. If you know it, think it, speak it, write it, take action on it. <clears throat> Monetizing yourself. Just like I was talking about speaking, you know, that information that's in your head that story that you have, you know, go somewhere, share it on social media, package it, do videos because you have to reach people. And in order to monetize yourself, you got, you got influencer marketing, you got the digital guys like I do, you have speaking, you have products, you have tea, you have whatever you want to have, but people don't realize that they can monetize themselves. Even if it's nine to five knowledge, even if you just work the nine to five and you're like, what do I know? I just work at Walmart. Uh, you know a lot <laughs> because the, you know a lot. You know a lot of stuff. No matter which which specific industry you or like just area you work in, somebody is probably trying to learn that for their small business. And if you work for one of the biggest businesses in the country, in the world, you have to know something of value that they don't know. So just packaging it, presenting it, and promoting it in a way to where they can they can easily consume that. It's like people pay you for that. People pay you for that. Uh, lifestyle is very important. 
I talk about that a lot too because people want to they want to feel like they're stepping into a different lifestyle when they step into your product or you know they watch your video so I live in LA so I can use I can utilize LA's backdrop to really give off a luxury you know beautiful upscale you know just amazing life and you know if you don't utilize that backdrop you, you're really lacking and then also with the shoe company promoting a luxury lifestyle a dapper lifestyle whenever people step into my shoes they're not stepping they're not just stepping into just any shoe they're stepping into a lifestyle of like excellence of wealth of dapper of of elegance of cigars of whiskey of, of like whatever you know it's it's like a really it's a shift. It makes you feel different inside. You know, when you put when you put on a nice suit, all my men in here, when you put on a nice suit and you put on some nice dress shoes and everything fitting right and you put on your cologne to snip and you got the fresh cut, you like, yeah, I like this. I feel good. And you feel like you can conquer the world. So you feel like if you feel good, if you look good, you feel good. We all know that, right? If you look good, you feel good. And you have to be comfortable within what you're wearing too. So understanding your lifestyle and your style is very important because you shouldn't have to step into some clothes or into an environment where you're uncomfortable. You always want to be comfortable. You want to be able to step out and be like, yeah, I can, I can talk about this or I can talk about that. Or I can, I can, I can seal the deal because I, I fit, I feel good. I look good. I feel good. And um, your image is everything too, because you get treated differently based on what you're wearing. So if I walk in with a suit, and you walk in with a polo and some slacks, <clears throat> I'm more likely to close a thousand, a million dollar deal before you close it. I'm more likely to be like, oh, here's some wine. Uh, here's our new collection of clothing. Would you like to shop here? And then the person with the polo, here's our sales rep. You know, you want to shop here? So you get treated different. Perception, you're, you're, the, the way people perceive you is completely different. And <clears throat> I've seen that on, on Rodeo out here, like so much, you know, so it's, it's crazy how much your image and just the threads you put in your body can change how people, uh, you know, perceive you and then through social media as well the lifestyle you promote people perceive you and they they, they idolize you they want to be you they want to be where you are so that they'll do anything or buy anything that you say hey this is what i use you should buy this and they'll be like oh yeah i want to be where he is or she is so i'm going to buy that so that's what influencers tap into that because personal branding building that trust building that that FOMO as well. FOMO is really big. Fear of missing out. Like I don't want to miss miss out on what Dr. Dapper is doing. You know, if he's dropping tea, I gotta have a tea because he drinks tea every morning, and every night. That tea has something to do with how he made it to LA. I have to get it. <laughs> like so, it's really connecting all that. Um, and then going to self is source. You know, it's self is everything. We I, we fail to realize how much power we have um, over our lives uh, and and the things that we do and the thing that the decisions we make and the things we manifest. Manifestation is real. You know, like I said, if you think it, speak it, write it, because that vision was given to you and nobody can see it but you, as clear as you. So you have to make it clear for others, you know, take the vision and, and, and the plan and make it clear, you know, make it plain. So um, really understand, understanding yourself and, and connecting with self is something that is, is so powerful because once you're connected with self and, and you, whether you're the universe, God, Buddha, whoever, whatever you, whatever religion or whatever you believe in, you know, it's that, that power. Is going to be the same you know and we have to understand that once we tap into to ourself and what we have within um and even placing a purpose on what, everything that happens like my parents die every three years so 2010 2013 2016 i place a positive purpose on every three years something greater is going to happen in my life because after losing people three 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 threes i realized okay threes play a huge part uh, in my life so it's up to you to place, okay, what is these, what do these threes mean? What do they actually mean? Are they going to continue to mean death? Or are they going to start to mean life? So you speak that on your life. You speak that on, on your journey because the tongue is very powerful. Whatever you speak, you got to watch what you speak. You know, it's, it's very, it's very powerful. So <laughs> that's something that when I talk about self is source. It's just going connect, reconnecting with yourself. And uh, even in this moment, understand, you know, what, what do you love? What do you care about? What do you want to do? Don't, don't let the system just determine what you can do with your life you know if you if you live for friday and you hate when monday's coming around it's time for a shift it's time for something to change because you you're wasting so much time so much life if you work monday to friday and you only live for friday evening and saturday because you're probably going to church on sunday and you're relaxing and you're probably mad about monday coming around you only got a day and a half that you really really get to dedicate to yourself and something that you love so if you think about how short life is and you think about five times four, times 12, times 60, 70, 80 years, you're like, dang, I'm wasting so many days 
every every year within my life that I should really be dedicated to something like for myself. Like, what do I love? What do I care about? What do I want to do? What do I want to leave? What do I, what do I want to be remembered for? Because people don't remember you because of that job at Walmart or how much money you made. They remember you for how, how you impacted their life and how you made them feel the last time they saw you. So I really start to think about that. Okay, how am I impacting people's lives? How am I changing lives? Not how am I making this company richer? How am I making my family richer? How am I investing in, how am I hustling for my last name and not my first name at a corporation? Because you're just a number. They don't, they don't care. You could, when you die, that job is filled the next day, if not that night. <laughs> so you got to really understand, start to understand how much other people value because they don't value as much as you think and how much you really value yourself, your family, your lineage, your, your generations coming after you. So that's self is so big. And then this is something my, something my mom said, uh, would always say, don't look like what you're going through or what you've been through. And, and when I tell people I, I grew up with rats, roaches, holes in the walls, people are like, no, you didn't. Like, look at you. You dress nice. You're doing this, doing that. You're in L.A. But I'm like, my mom will always say, don't look like what you're going through, what you've been through. And that's something that's so deep. You could be having a terrible day. I could be having a terrible day. My energy is so hot, though, whenever I'm having a bad day. People can kind of tell because I'm like kind of lower energy. I'm kind of chill. I'm like, yo, what's wrong, Eric? Like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's whatever. But you'll, you'll never catch me like too down or down and out because I'm grateful. My word of the year, I highly recommend everybody having a word of the year. And, you know, whatever goal that you have, write it on the whiteboard. Like, I, I wanted to make a million dollars this year. And when you break that down into simple terms, that's only $600 a day. We can all make $600 a day. Like, easy. So if you want to make a meal, don't look at a million. Look at, oh, $600 a day. Bet. I can see myself doing that. You know, so that, that's something that's major as well. Uh, you can go to the next one. Okay. Sponsor Young Entrepreneur. So this is something that I was doing through um, like giving back. Like I talk a lot about giving back. Uh, this is something that I, was, I started doing because, because of my digital guide. So like I said, you plant one seed and it branches off into different things. So how can I start to give back without having as much as I want in order to give back as much as I want? Like, because I want to come back to Arkansas and give a scholarship, like either in fashion or for entrepreneurs that want to, you know, pursue entrepreneurship immediately after college. Because I, I'm, I'm so big on that because I feel like we're always fed into Walmart, Tyson, go work, go work, go work. And then we're, we're, we're distracted from our true just dreams and goals and passions. And, you know, I feel like that's something that needs to be funded because you can really get ahead of the curve. The age of adolescence has been stretched so much because of, because we tell people like, Hey, you know, you got to get a job and people graduate without jobs, you know, and people, people, we have these connections to if your GPA isn't this way or, if you didn't make these kind of grades, you know, you're going to be a failure. But the people that have these Tesla, these Apples, these Microsofts and things like that, a lot of people dropped out of high school. So it's like we have to start to like show people like, hey, you know, college is very important and having a nine to five is very important. But if you have that burning desire to own your own business or your own brand, you can do that. And I'm going to be like a living, like I'm living proof that you can, you know, it's possible. So I really wanted to like just figure out a way <clears throat> to give back. Uh, even if it's the smallest way, because something like that, that knowledge can change a person's life. That can, that can shift something in their mind. Like, like I can actually do it. Like I'm going to start doing it now. And the earlier you catch them, the, the further ahead they are, because you can start, there's no age limit to starting a business. You can be, parents can start businesses for their babies as soon as they pop out. <laughs> like, yo, like, let's start a business for this baby right now. Um, so really like feeding entrepreneurship, you know, feeding the next generation of, um, of visionaries. You know, we have to do that because we don't want that to die off. So that's what that is. And that's, that's something I do uh, monthly giving back. And I would, I would love for everybody on here to go to my website and even nominate a young entrepreneur that, that they would like to receive a, a digital guide on a monthly basis. We're not a monthly basis, but I pick different ones every month and I have different people that can also sponsor on my website as well. So for one is $9 a month for two is 14 and for three is $19. And through that monthly, you know, payment, I'm able to, you know, just give out digital guides for free. Whether I go speak at a school, I'm like, hey, how many students here? All right, bet. I got 50 sponsors this month. I'm giving away 50 free digital guides to, you know, whoever wants them. So just really finding ways to give back because people feel to realize you don't have to have millions of dollars to be a philanthropist. Something like this can create millions for them. And it's like, hey, I just really gave them knowledge that can allow them to create a business, to brand it, to scale it, to monetize it. To, and just invest in somebody else as well, you know, because they all have friends that, that want to be entrepreneurs so they can get that knowledge and they can go share it and they can help their friends apply it. So 
sponsor young entrepreneurs is really dope. It's only the beginning for that. It's gonna be real dope. You can go to the next. One. <clears throat> Almost done. Almost done. <laughs> fail like a baby. So when I say fail like a baby, um, if we knew what failure was as kids, we wouldn't be walking today. Because if you think back, we crawl, we look around, like, dang, y'all really walking up there? I want to walk. And we get up, we try to walk. And what we do? We fall down. <laughs> And we fall down a lot, <laughs> but if we knew what failure was, if we knew what giving up was, we would continue to crawl. So I tell people to tap back into that childlike mentality as an entrepreneur, as, as a human in general, tap back into that childlike mentality because that's where your passions are. That's where your, your grit is. That's where your resilience is because we didn't know what failure was. So anytime you're in business, I always tell people, yo, bro, just fail like a baby. You know, just keep getting back up. Keep, back, keep getting back up. Because that's what, if you look at that baby, that's what they're going to keep doing. So if you really care about something, you really want to do something, you really want to achieve something, continue to, to get up. And those, every time you fall, if it don't kill you, it's going to make you stronger. So, and you need that feel. You need that failure. Failure is a prerequisite to success. So you falling, is you like, damn, I'm not trying to fall no more. So once I start walking, <laughs> I'm going to get this. Like, it's going to be good. I'm going to be walking. And then you start, you start jogging and you start sprinting. You're like, dang. I'm really doing it. And that's how business is as well. It takes time. You fall, you fail, but you got to get back up. And sometimes your circle has to get back up. If you see a baby getting up, you'll see them grab onto like a counter so they can get that stability. They can be stable. Your circle is your counter. Your circle is your couch for you to hold on to when you're falling. And if your circle can't do that, you might need to find a new circle. <laughs> but that's, yeah. And then go to the next one. I think that's it. Yep. And then you can click again. And then we can go to the, uh, yeah. Oh, everybody unmute themselves. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Can you ask some questions? Yeah, y'all got questions. I can answer questions. Any questions? I love questions. Any questions? Yeah, y'all are welcome to unmute yourself and ask questions. If you want to put them in the chat, I can relay them that way. So, yeah, everyone, Please. go for it. Please ask questions. Hey, this is Jen. I'm just going to ask, so what do you think when you're first getting started, what was your biggest obstacles that you kind of tackled uh biggest obstacles would be uh funding and support uh because any any time <clears throat> like being honest with a black owned business anything that's black owned isn't perceived as luxury we kind of like devalue ourselves so we kind of don't support ourselves so when i did that you know support was very hard to get and then also funding is very hard for uh, minority owned businesses as well so that was something i had to like get through and you know just be able to pivot and just really think outside of the box so I wouldn't be confined in the box and uh, I can continue to push forward and I think um where there's a will there's a way so I really just made made a way out of no way and I started with nothing and you know just being able to just build network connect but um and that helped me get through but funding and then getting support also uh was a bigger was the biggest uh, kind of like issues for me to uh, overcome thanks yeah, you're welcome thank you for the question more questions Hey, give us your elevator pitch. I want to hear it. <laughs> elevator pitch. I mean, I did that in a minute. Like, like, <laughs> if I walk up, like if I walk up to somebody and I'm just like, oh, this is my, most of the time when people, I don't, my brand speaks for itself, mm -hmm. you know, because anytime a conversa conversation has started with me, it's because, oh, I like your shoes. Where they come from? And like, oh, I made them. <clears throat> and, then, and then from there, it's like, oh, bet. I just want to know everything about the brand. But, you know, I usually tell people LFLS Shoes is a designer upscale luxury dress shoe company um and that's that's really that's really it. and I, I, my, my like slogan is put yourself in my shoes because uh, my story is very deep and i feel like by putting yourself in my shoes you step into my story my journey the blood sweat and tears that i put into my brand uh so my elevator pitch i don't i've done stuff untraditional from the from the jump like no business plan um no pitches and all that kind of stuff so when it ele i hadn't heard elevator pitch in a minute <laughs> so it's been a long time so i hadn't really just thought about it but yeah that's what I'm just not traditional and I just you know go on the fly with everything now I like that you just your your pitch is what your is yourself and what yeah you're, like it's, it's the way it's, that's I'm great board, so it's like what I wear but if somebody like nobody really like just yeah it's just like people like oh where'd you get your shoes or I love your outfit or this and that. I'm like oh I made them and then they just want to know more about it and then that, that just sparks a long conversation that's longer than the elevator pitch because they'll ask specific questions I'm like well, here we go. Like, this is my story. <laughs> Much better. Yeah. Thank you. You're very motivated. I appreciate that, Katie uh, Harrison. I love to uh, hear your 
elevator pitch. Oh, that was you. Okay, if you have one. Yeah, if you said if you have one, yeah, I don't have one. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? No. What would you have done differently? Um, <clears throat> I, I think what what would you have done differently is a good question for um a lot of people, but I feel like everything ha kind of happens for a reason. Um, so if I if one thing hadn't happened, I wouldn't have been able to learn from that situation. So. <clears throat> of course there there are don'ts like don't take on investors if you don't need them um you know don't grow too fast um and things like that like I, I but I never feel like I grew too fast or I tried to grow too fast um so yeah if I could do anything differently I mean I wouldn't because I wouldn't be the person I am today I wouldn't be able to share the story I'm sharing I wouldn't have the knowledge that I have because when you your experience experience is something is the best you know like teacher and when I experience failures you know, I'm more, more of a hands-on learner. So when I fail, I remember that. Just like if your mom, if you go to school, you get in trouble <clears throat> and you come home, your mom said, all right, I'm going to whoop your ass if you get in trouble again. And you go to school and you come, and you act up again and you come home, you get a whooping, you're going to remember like, oh, I remember how that feels. Like, I'm not doing that again. So I feel like everything I've been through, uh, you know, it's allowed me to become the person I am today uh, and it's molded me into the person I am and I wouldn't be who I am without, without that. Did you take any marketing classes or were you self-taught? So with marketing, <clears throat> it's just me. It's uh, I know like the back of my hand, and it's just I I, I never needed a class for it. It's just something that came natural. And then also with me building my brand and thinking outside of the box with that, uh, and seeing what worked, and then also helping other people build their businesses. Um, it's just been experience. Experience has been the, is the best teacher you can ever have. Um, so once you dabble in it for a few years, three, four, five years, you're like, okay, I kind of know what I'm doing because I've helped other people. And then also. <clears throat> if your friends come to you to ask you for something for help with something, you might want to start to look at that. Okay. Can I monetize this? Because they come to me for, for my expert advice within this industry. So there is some value here. And especially if they see the results they want to see. Uh, so yeah, no marketing class, no business class and no entrepreneurship class. <clears throat> I just feel like <clears throat> being an entrepreneur, you can't learn how to be an entrepreneur. Like, you can't be taught. Like you, you just have to have it within you. Of course you can learn things about business marketing, you know, profit and loss, ROI, this and that, but it's like, if you don't have that, that real grit resilience, all that is just whatever. It's just like marketing without branding. You know, you, you can, you can, you can, you know, market, 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 but if you don't have the actual substance within it that you just needed to like, you know, make this happen, then it's not going to happen. That's why most people invest in individuals instead of their business. <clears throat> As a creative person, lots of ideas. How do you decide what to focus on? Oh, that's, that's a good one. Somebody, somebody asked me that yesterday on live. <clears throat> um, so what I always say is, um, what, are, what, are you, what are you most passionate about? Because you can, what do you think about the most? What do you think about all day, every day? Showering, sleeping, dreaming about it, you know, driving around thinking about it. Because you're not thinking about a thousand things every day. But I'm sure you're probably thinking about one thing every day that's just on your nerves. And that's like your, your gut, that's, your, that's, that's your, your, your soul telling you like, yo, you need to focus on this. And whenever you find that one thing that you're really, really passionate about, and you figure out how you can monetize it, tap into that. Because like I said earlier, when you plant one seed, it'll branch off into the other things you really care about doing. Um, and they, they should all coexist. So make sure those, those ideas, they kind of coexist. Uh, but yeah, I would say focus on that one thing. Like the shoe company was my one thing I focused on and I cared about it. I loved it. And I feel like once you do that, that allows you to build that, resi that, re that resilience and grit. And it allows you to actually like, um, manifest and just get birth other things that you really care about um so yeah it happens organically but yeah i would say focus on what you're really passionate about what you think about a lot and something that you really don't have to get paid for you know something you really 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 care about awesome let's do one more question and then we'll wrap it up if anyone wants to unmute themselves or here we got one in the chat here <clears throat> to california recently after college yeah nine months ago um how was your locator uh, there are a lot of challenges. Um, there are a lot of challenges starting in Arkansas, of course, because people don't, people don't value. I would say go somewhere where people value what you do. You know, they can understand, uh, the value within it because in Arkansas, I could throw an event and nobody would come. So it's kind of like, okay, now I come to LA, I can throw events the first month I get here and have 50, 50 people come out because you're in a city that understands, okay, <clears throat> we need to go to events to network to build because you're in a city full of creatives or entrepreneurs or just visionaries. And um, that, that, <clears throat> that changed me. I don't know why, I need some hot tea again. It's tea cold. <laughs> it, 
golly. <clears throat> oh my God. But yeah, um, geography definitely plays a huge part because I built the business to where it is for three years um, <clears throat> in Arkansas. And I feel like you have to have a plan, of course, when you move to California, because people think if I moved to LA, oh, I made it just because I hopped on the plane and I, flew to, I, I made it to LA and I stepped on the soil. No, <laughs> like, living expenses, like rent went from 900 to 2,400 for the same thing. So it's like, it's stupid, it's crazy. So if you don't have a plan, if you don't have that grit and that grind, and if you don't have something that's been built, like a solid foundation to stand on, I wouldn't, I wouldn't move yet. But you know, if you got something to stand on, if you got family to back you <clears throat> and people to support you, then um, definitely. But I, I was, I had myself. So yeah. Awesome. I need some hot tea for real. This is over. Talk. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll wrap it up so you can rest your voice a little bit. No, um, good. But yeah. We want to thank um, Eric for doing this today. We really, really appreciate it. You've motivated, oh, yeah. for sure, have motivated me, and I think you've motivated a lot of people on here. Um, so we really appreciate it. Um, again, Eric is an alum. He graduated in 2016 and is out in LA now. Um, but we have recorded this session and we're going to put it on our alumni website. So if you have any friends who aren't able to tune in um, or if you feel, feel like something that Eric has said might help someone that you know, feel free to give them the link to watch this. I think it would be very beneficial to a lot of people. But uh, Eric, yeah. we want to thank you again. His website, if you'd like to check it out, is right on the screen here. It's uh, thedrdapper.com. So go visit it for some more uh, content. If you'd like to get one of his uh, guides that he showed us, um, that would be on the website too. So, but we want to thank you again, Eric. This has been great. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much.